we missed one team fight, but beyond that, we are paused and should be all right to proceed on forward. Let me get back in contact with Triumph. All right, I am back. Sorry, man. What's going on? All right, so you're back in game as well? Mm-hmm. All right, so everybody, if you can hear me right now, please turn the broadcast off and then back on again. You'll be able to hear Blaze talk once again. Okay, good to go. All right, so... Yeah, but uh, basically we've been missing... I think this is why they want it. Like, we've been questioning why CM is here, because obviously her offensive capabilities and defensive capabilities are in questionable. Uh, questionable compared to a lot of other sports, but Slark is in this jungle non-stop with his Shadow Blade, and he is spamming, and I mean literally spamming utter crap out of Shadow Blade. And I think this is why they wanted the um, Arcane Aura just to help him spam, because he's mm -hmm. using up so much mana doing this. Yeah. So, farming it up very, very quickly, the Arcane Aura is just one point in. One, one mana regen for... The Slark specifically. It's like, a quarter. it's like a quarter of his mana regen coming from that. Yeah. And I mean, he's literally been here non-stop, just forcing them out of that jungle. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on top of that, of course, the Oblivion Staff helping him out so much. He's just able to kind of go for that item build-up where they're going to get a second Orchid to completely destroy the Weaver, and they're going to be in a great spot. We actually, there is a pick-off coming on in. Silent, unfortunately, lassoing an Illusion. And they do pop off the Orchid on that as well. And now that they know that the is unavailable, they're going to go and try to force the issue up top. Era coming in to farm up the Creeps. And uh, Sam is going to have to back off here. But, yeah, beyond that, that, not really too much going on. As far as that one team fight, I, I did DC within. Uh, they were just song, they used their Song of the Siren in it. Uh, can you break that down for me a little bit? Um, basically, Song of the Siren, it, um, all it did was uh, just pick on Bane and blow him to pieces and then back off. Mm -hmm. But this game, I mean, it's completely turned around. They are all, like, Quantic are all over Fnatic. They're just, the Slark is hunting so damn hard. And the other thing is, of course, Weaver is squishy as shit. And they've been picking on him with a Blink Bat. He's been blown apart like twice since you've been missing, just by jumping on top of him, dragging him, and they just burst him down. Like even before the last two wears off, they just burst him down. There's nothing he can do about it. Lincoln's though, picked up a Naga Star. I, I feel like they might have needed something a little bit more aggressive at this point in time. It is going to help out. I mean, it's good defensive stats against Slark. So she's not going to die as quickly. But where's Slark? I mean, Slark. He's no, no, that's not Slark. Actually, Clink's running around in the opposing jungle now. I mean, obviously the Mana Regen is going to help him out a bit as well, and he's working towards the Daedalus now. On top of that, and he might even try and jump Era. Yeah, I mean... And he can do a ton of damage. Yeah, combining that together, if they can both get uh, two-on-one on top of him, they're actually going to be in a really good position to bring him down rapidly, uh, especially now they're going to have a second Orchid coming up in a little bit here. Uh, pretty much every single hero that Fnatic has can be pretty well screwed over by the Orchid Malevolence. I mean, if the VS is silenced, and to keep a lighter silence, they can't do anything at all. Like, they just, they don't contribute to anything, and they'll be dropped down in a matter of seconds. But on top of that, the core heroes, uh, Lifesteal, if you can't, Rage is going to be easy to disable by just about everything else, like the Frostbite and such. Uh, the Weaver uses it, his spells to defensively maneuver with his Shikuchi, as well as survive with time lapse. And uh, on top of that, Naga Siren. You shut her up, and she's not going to be able to uh, screw over the team fights as much as she would intend. So, really, Orchid being a, the pick a litter item here, I think they're really, really happy that they have these two heroes and are able to pick this up at, at a really good timing. I mean, the Orchid on the Clinks has been around for a while now, has crit available as well, and this Slark is moving very rapidly towards him and only needs a handful of kills before he'll have it. I've got to say, Weaver has picked up a much, much needed gem to try and keep this invisible pest at bay. That said, I mean, he's been getting picked off by the Batrider so hard, he may just end up giving away a free gem in a moment mm -hmm. if Batrider manages to jump him with a little bit of help again. Meanwhile, it looks like Klinks is after Naga's Siren. He decides not to Orchid her. I think he's waiting for Slark to get close. Uh, they've decided to back off. The yeah. tower's too close. And, of course, she's got Song up at level 2. And Lincoln's, so and, it would have just gone oh yeah, on to yeah. good, good point. Hmm... Uh, now, top lane, I mean, this is this is how, how badly that Fnatic happened to pack, right? Like, errors need to be protected at all times by a pair of supports there. And even there, I mean, Fly is so squishy. They could, like, literally, Slark could blow into pieces quite easily by himself. In fact, Slark has his own gem now as well. So he's de-warding on his own on top of that. And now we see Batrider. Batrider also picking up his own Ghost Scepter. I think it's a good buy indeed. It's really going to help keep Weaver, Naga Siren, and Error, um, Error's nakes off him. So he can be a lot more aggressive with his plays, not to worry about getting torn to shreds when he goes for a lasso. Meanwhile, though, Fly gonna run. no, it's hanging around. They're all. I mean, this is it. They're the pack right. Like, look, look at this right now. How much these guys need to stick together? The Dire team are always really congested. Whereas, look at this farming here, farming here, farming here, farming over here. 
the radiant side can split up a lot more. It means they're tapping way more sources of gold and income. So they're going to get, like you see here now, this is turned, because it's been farming like this compared to the congested state of Fnatic, it's been turned around really rapidly, plus these gains. They're now ahead, whereas they were quite heavily behind before in mm -hmm. terms of experience, although, uh, in terms of gold, their experience, although, has been ahead for a while. And there we go. Oh, beautiful swap! Yes, oh. fantastic swap, so. But still, they popped the Song of the Siren there. I, I think that they actually wanted to kill the Batrider when he was jumping in. And they missed the opportunity because he was actually, I believe, was... I'm not sure if he was the, or, or the passenger was swapped, but either way, Silent able to blink out successfully because he was not in range of that Song of Sirens. So if No-Tail had been able to pull the bat further in, they actually probably could have gotten a turnaround kill. But either way, they're happy to be able to just rip them apart, and as such, now they don't have to worry about that last. So, and I believe that's Firefly. No, it's, it's up and available, but still... Plenty of time to take down Roche with a little bit of medallion, Riptide action. So they take it, they get Era, the Aegis of the Immortal, and he's going to be that much more effective in the next fight. Though we do see, oh, Grey pick off on the Clinks. That gem already paying for itself. Yeah, Clinks are like, whoops, gem, better not do that again. Now he'll get caught out once by that, but he shouldn't happen twice in a row. See, Barrett has forced his way down a cliff to get away from trouble. Meanwhile, Slark still charging around the opposing jungle. Whatever the hell he please, I think, and especially with Song, I mean, if he wanted to, they could try and gank. No, I'm Trixie up in the top lane, and there we go. Link, wow, wow, <laughs> it's not <laughs> often you see, not often you see a Lincoln's there on a live steal, and yet, I mean, he feels so pressured by them in their their orchid action that he feels like he needs to pick one up. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like this is a mistake, just because you're going to find that they're just going to use something cheap and crappy, like a four stuff to blow it off him. Yeah, and that's what just happened to Trixie here. He got lassoed up. Uh, Funzi was already in a great position for him, and you're just trying to farm underneath your tier 2. It's not nearly as safe as you would expect it to be, because they have so much potential to initiate. Not necessarily the side supports. Uh, Bane, actually, no, never mind. Ryze just picked up a Blink Dagger recently, so he's in a great position for that. So pretty much, Crystal Maiden is the only one you don't have to worry oh. about just coming out of the woodwork in no time at all. Speaking of, she's not going to have a great time in this situation. <laughs> Oh, uh, Nakes Bomb. I mean, that's, that's just the cheapest thing you could do. Find a Crystal Maiden and the Nakes Bomber. Like, you even needed to Nakes oh. Bomber. And they lose a Curry. Oh, what was that? Uh -huh. They lose a Curry to boot as well. Ouch. That's That didn't need to happen. Fucking really bad. Really one of those wards, but uh, not going to be able to acquire them for quite some time now. That's four wards. And Quantic's current state of vision isn't the best. Uh, obviously, no Radiant Wards up at all because of that. And they're not going to have them for a really, really good amount of time. So with that courier down for uh, for a long while, we're going to be looking at an opportunity for Fnatic to change things up. They they have that gem, they have the map control, and they could deward any ward that existed. But the fact that they don't have to worry about it for another handful of minutes is actually going to be allowing them to actually play aggressive for the first time this game, instead of con constantly just being on the run. We'll see what they've got up their sleeve. Indeed, whether or not they can get aggressive. I mean, yeah, it's going to help. But that said. I mean, that said, Klinks is kind of getting fat, and to be honest, I feel like he's a much stronger carry in terms of burst damage than Lifestealer can be, especially just because, I mean, this is sort of an issue that Lifestealer is going to run into, even Naga Sarver is, like, partially, is the fact that she's going to have to get to grips with the enemy, and you've got all of these really annoying lockdown abilities from Bane, from um, Batrider, even even a little bit from Chris, like, she's got to slow and stuff, and see a song, though, up in, the t up in the top jungle there. They're trying to set up a kill here on Bat, and in fact, the Riptide faster, four staffs out, though, Looks like he's also popped. He's uh, also popped his ghost. And now Crystal May actually ults and does absolutely nothing because of rage. But Hanny will probably get picked off here. He does indeed go down, but they're going to get a revenge kill. In fact, they tick off Slark and they lose the gem. That is a pretty big blow. Not only have they lost their wards for a good four minutes, but they've also lost their gem, which is their main point of counter detection. And now, in fact, they're going to lose some more heroes. Oh, actually, no, Trixie's going to die as well again. Or maybe not. He pops his illusions, and it looks like they will actually lose the clinks instead. As well as the Bane. Bane also gets wow. picked off. Wow. That was unexpected. Trixie just getting away. Smart split there with the illusions. Mm -hmm. Just, buying, just a buying him a little bit enough time. Yeah. Even if the if the Clinks had pursued a little bit further to go for a right click after the illusion split had occurred, he definitely could have probably gotten the kill. But uh, he would have been just walking even further into Arrow's hands. So he's just happy to be able to jump on in there and finish things off really, really quickly. So, yeah, cleaned it up nicely. I think they got their own gem back, to be honest. But uh, either way, they have all the gems now under back again under their control. And they're pretty happy about this state of position. One weird thing that I noticed is that against two Lincoln Spheres now, Ryze has not skilled at all 
on Enfeeble. I mean, it's the easiest thing to just spend 95 mana, pop off a, a Lincoln's, but instead, not really deciding to skill that up, and I'm not exactly sure why. Yeah, I mean, you definitely could have argued for one less level of brain step to do that. It really would have been a good idea, but I guess I guess they weren't really planning for uh, the Lincoln's on the eggs. I mean, yeah, sure, Nagasar and Mike, we've seen them do it before, but... Uh, I mean, the, the Batrider already has the 4 staff to help deal with that, so that's not too much of a worry for him. I just don't think they expected the Lincoln and the Nakes, and they might not even realize the Lincoln's is out yet. I mean, if they haven't looked that closely, they might not have noticed it. Mm. Oh, another Lincoln's, why not? Just stack it up, we'll be seeing Keeper Light and Vengeful Spirit picking it up next. But for right now, we've got Weaver, we've got Lifestealer, and of course the Naga Siren, all three of them having the Lincoln Sphere. And it's not really something they can deal with, right? After they pop off the Orchid, they will get Initiation onto Trixie and burn her down with this Orchid and the right clicks, but now turn around onto Plinks, finishing him off very, very quickly. Era looking for his next kill. There is going to be a Pounce, but simultaneous with the Leap. Plus he's going to try to turn around onto No-Tail here, but instead just gets rocked. We do see them cleaning it up nicely, now evening up the kills. And this is, Quantic is a very kill-tastic team, so the fact that they are now at even ends with a what I would say a more carry oriented lineup. I, I gotta say Quantic are very concerned about how the next few seconds and few minutes uh, will occur in the next game. I'm gonna say the biggest turnaround has been Slark has lost a lot of mobility in these fights because I mean he's been relying heavily on Shadowblade to get around in the fights and obviously he's old as well and he doesn't have it anymore because they've got not one but two gems. I'm pretty sure that second gem, yeah second gem back in base so I mean the thing they needed to do was as soon as they realized it was a gem on tricks on um was that Hanny? They had to pick that off really quickly, and you know that keeps the gem down for a long time. Plus, it's a big um, loss in gold and stuff. But the problem was not only did they fail with that, but they gave away their own gem. So now they've got so much problem for him to be effective. Oh, blink for I don't know about that play from Bat and the swap out there as well. Bat could give away a free kill. I really don't know where he was going with that. And now we're going to see Rise down a lot of trouble. He's going to get thrown in the Fiend's grip, but it's not going to be enough. Gets stunned out of it. And now he's going to die a horrible, painful death. Crystal Maiden. Saying, you know what? I'm, I'm effective, man. Look at look at me old. Look at this old. This old is awesome. Yeah. Does so much stuff. And now he dies. A horrible, painful death. Actually, no, he gets away because time lapse back. Oh no, spoke too soon. Here we go. Song of the Siren. And now Era, in fact, going to eat him. Pops on the arm that once again destroys Crystal Maiden. And now it's all about Funzy. Oh no, Funzy gets netted up, and they can see him because they have a gem. Goodbye, Funzy. And fan fanatic, absolutely fantastic. Shut down Quantic, and it looks like you're gonna lose a tier two bottom as well. I mean, it was it was looking really good for Quantic. They had complete domination of the map for a good five ten minutes, but unfortunately, the gem has completely turned everything around. Yeah, and these Lincolns, for that matter. I mean, in this position, so many times they've been trying to get spells off, orchids off, anything off, and they just can't. Like the the both the nightmare and the Fiend's grip had to be used just to lock down Era for maybe three seconds before uh, the. Magic Missile came on through and cancelled it anyway, so they don't have the lockdown they want, they don't have the lockdown they need, and so Era can just stay on target, bring whoever he wants down, and now Hani's gotten really big, he's bounced back quite a bit, sitting at level 20, and the guy that was constantly being uh, blink initiated on by Bat is now the one dishing out all the damage, like he is doing a lot with his Geminate and doing over 200, and it's just really, really impressive how quickly he can just fry people. We're going to see the Bane drop down in just a moment, and although the Ghost Scepter keeps the Bat Rider up, they can even go for uh, Clinks here. No Tail on the run. Earn Charge keeping him up so that... Oh my goodness, they can't even get a kill on the Vengeful Spirit with that Bone Fletcher. Now Silent in a bit of a rough spot, but he should be able to at least survive through this. Yeah, still, bad spot for them to be in. And now Funzy, kind of a last ditch, going on out here to try to finish somebody off, but no chance at all. Fly will be pulled in the fountain, will die. But, uh, you know, when you're... Best th bet is to pull somebody into your fountain. You, there's a problem with your game. So in this situation here, it's no tail, a ghost sceptering up. It might not even be enough for sound to finish him. He does get him with a firefly. Still, good game. Will play comes out and fanatic really pulling things together here in the past few minutes. I mean, you were talking about it earlier. Um, the fact that oh, what, what we think with Bat Rider being left so late in the draft uh, comes in like Vengeful Spirit, really, really good counter pick to Bat Rider. Just the fact that you can completely nullify this. So I mean, any any hero that like specializes in isolating a target, you can swap him out. Like Bane as well, if he gets a good fiend script down, well, and you, you imagine he fights his way through all of the Lincolns, manages to nightmare and fiend script the target he wants to get, and then you just get swapped out. Mm -hmm. 
It's like so aggravating. What do you do about it? Absolutely. And along with that, we've seen Trixie use a couple times. That song has such a great range, and so if oh, yeah. the Bane is in range to Fiend's Grip, he sure as hell is in range to listen to that sweet song of Trixie's people. But we're going to see mid racks fall, bottom racks already taken down, and of course, everybody having disconnected on out. The Ancient should be falling with them in just a moment, but... Just really, really strong play from Fnatic. I expected a lot more pickoffs from Klinks and Slark. I mean, they did get nine kills on Slark. They did get five kills on Klinks. But up against the Keeper of Light, Mental Spirit, you need to even rack up more. So the fact that they survived through all this, it, kudos to those support players because not an easy game to survive on through. Let's be honest. Um, before Slark got his Shadow Blade, he was not great. He was um, sure. funzy. I guess it just hadn't played that much. Like maybe it was the I don't know ping lag, whatever. But he was missing a lot of pounces. And when you've got all your levels and pounces and only one level in Dark Pact, that's a, not not just the fact that you're missing the, the the pseudo stun, the lockdown, but you're missing all your damage. That's that's all of his damage being lost because he's missing the missing the pounce. So that wasn't good at all. And I mean I really feel like they could have got a lot of extra early kills, which could have definitely swung things much better in their favor go to the mid game if he'd been landing those pounces. But as it was, you know, if wishes were fishes, but regardless, you know, Fnatic, they played a good game. They counted nicely. They were definitely on the back foot. They were definitely on the back foot for quite some time, especially when they lost control of their jungle, but it came back in there. They got back into it and they counterattacked very nicely. And the mass Lincolns turned out to really work out for them. Absolutely. And uh, from there, of course, they had the late game scalability from their draft. They were able to take those uh, really, really powerful carries. And I mean, the fact that they could live through all that and just stay on top of things, life still got out of control very, very quickly. And I think the, the way to cement the advantage was when they took down the Roshan and really Quante <coughs> got nothing to show for it. So really nicely done by them. They take this game away. They will. They do get third place as a result of this, and they get the, the best points they could in that situation. Unfortunately, Fnatic, of course, did lose to Alliance, uh, so they won't be having a chance for first or second place. But speaking of that, we are going to be looking at the first and second place grand final decider for the Season 5 Mjolnir Cup. Uh, coming up, it's going to be Alliance going up against Mouse Sports, which is a matchup we've seen a couple of times previously. But uh, it seems to be a very different uh, style of play each and every time these teams come out to fight each other. They always try to bring something new, and uh, I'm really excited for it. How about you? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. see what Mouse Sports have got up their sleeve. Quick apology to Mouse Sports. I bet some items on them, so oh. they're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> I don't win bets. don't win a lot of item bets. Well, easy rare is easy life. Maybe it'll work out for you. Anyways, thank you I'm guys so much for this time. <laughs> uh, anyways, thanks for tuning on in to the Premier League Season 5. We're going to bring, bring you guys the grand final in just a few minutes here. Um, we're going to be starting up the lobby immediately, and the games will be back-to-back. -back. As far as we can tell, there shouldn't be any more delays. So we are a little bit behind schedule, of course, but that's what happens when Dota just keeps on stacking up with some awesome games that go along. We just roll with the punches, and... We're going to see some awesome ones flying back and forth in just a few minutes, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Grand final coming up. Can't wait for it.